very warm welcome to this service of Evensong on this second Sunday of Advent. As you can see, both Advent, uh, two Advent candles are now lit. So we continue in prayer. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
foundations will be cast down. And what hath the righteous done? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord sees it in heaven. His eyes consider the poor, and his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord admireth the righteous, but the ungodly and him that delighteth in wickedness doth his soul abhor. Upon the ungodly he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, storm and tempest. This shall be their portion to drink. So the unrighteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance will behold the thing that is just. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Chapter 18, starting at verse 70. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? Elijah answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and followed the Baals. Now therefore, have all, Israel, have all Israel assembled for me at Mount Carmel with the, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, How long will you, will you go limping with two different opinions? the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets number 450. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood. But, but put no fire to it. I will prepare the other book and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire is indeed God. All the people answered, Well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first, for you are many. Then call on the name of your God, but put no fire to it. So they took the bull that was given to them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, crying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no answer. They limped about the altar that they had made. At noon Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, surely he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he has wandered away, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. Then they cried aloud, and, as was their custom, they cut themselves with swords and lances until the blood gushed out over them. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but there was no voice, no answer, and no response. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him. First he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seed. Next, he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, 
pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, Fill the four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Again he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So that the water ran all round the altar and filled the trench also with water. At the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the power of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord is indeed God. The Lord is indeed God. Here end of the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptising. Here end of the second lesson. Lord, now let us 
Dost thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word? For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the gentle and to be the glory of thy people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. God, 
from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, Creator and Redeemer of all that is, as we wait in hope for your salvation, Hear our prayers for your church throughout the world. We give thanks for this Diocese of Southwark, for Christopher, Rosemary and Carraway Archbishops, for all Christian communities in their care. We pray that your people may be expectant and watchful for the coming of your King. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all growth in understanding and trust among the nations and peoples of the earth. We ask you to bless and support all who work for reconciliation and peace. Inspire with your holy wisdom all who exercise authority in the world, all whose decisions affect the lives of others all who influence and shape public opinion. Give to them gifts of compassion and integrity and a concern for truth, that they may seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for the sick for the handicapped and the housebound, the elderly, the infirm, and the lonely. We remember before you this night, Sally, Mindy, Matrix, Roy, Roy Lewis, Gaynerlis, Rachel Owen, Joan, Stephen Burton, Grant each of them in their own situations to know the healing power of your love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Take to yourselves all who have gone from this world. Be to them their light and salvation, that they may see your goodness in the land of the living. Pray for the souls of those who have died in recent days, for John Howell Williams, Hilary King, and Chris Pennington. For all whose anniversary is at about this time, including Rosemary Newell, Monica Duncan, and Muriel Smith. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. So finally, we pray for ourselves, for our families and friends, those among whom we live, those with whom we work. Help us in these coming days to look up and raise our heads, for our redemption is drawing near, and to open our hearts that the King of glory may come in. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. 
so we gather together these and all of our prayers as we pray the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. notices for this evening. Um, just firstly to say um, a huge thank you to everyone who helped out to make our Advent Fair this weekend possible. Um, it was a fantastic success. Um, I think we had a few hundred people come through the doors over the course of uh, the two days, and several hundred in fact, so that was a massive success. Um, and we very much hope um, people will um, leave this place um, knowing something more of the love of God shown here. Um, next Saturday, um, at 7.30pm here in church, so Saturday the 10th of December, um, the Carl Scholten Choral Society um, will be doing their Christmas carol concert, um, which I'm told is going, is going to be excellent. Um, so please do come to that next Saturday if you can at 7.30pm. Um, £10 uh, tickets for adults um, and students and children go free. Um, please also bear in mind that the following Sunday we'll be having our just as excellent nine lessons and carols. Um, the services this week will be as usual um, with morning and evening prayer, um, Tuesday to Friday. Um, mass um, at 10am on Tuesday, at 5.30pm on Wednesday and 10am on Thursday. I think for this evening those are all of the notices. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. 